This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. As promised on Thursday, when you possibly saw me unboxing this guitar, uh, today we're taking a little bit of a deeper dive into what it's all about. This, in case you missed that video, is the Ert GW2 Pro uh, guitar. As opposed to the Ert GW2, without the Pro in its name, guitar that I reviewed last week. For the purposes of clarity throughout this video, I'm going to refer to that previous guitar as the Standard and this as the Pro, so we know what we're talking about. On the Standard guitar, I was really, really impressed with the, uh, the level of playability, the beautiful, the wonderful, the astonishingly good neck on it. Um, all compound radius and, uh, you know, compound neck profile and everything. Um, really, really beautiful neck to play on. Uh, this guitar differs from that in a couple of different ways. Uh, one, the timbers. Uh, I'll put a link to the specs of both guitars down in the description so you can compare what's going on. But the headline figures are the previous guitar, the standard, had a, uh, I think, a Paduk body with a poplar veneer on top, a maple neck with Paduk stripes uh, down the back like that, basically. You can see we've still got the Paduk stripes here. The neck on this guitar is a wood called, I think it's pronounced Wenge or Wenge, W-E-N-G-E, -E, essentially, uh, and the body is roasted ash but as i say if you're interested in more a more deep dive into the specs check out the links in the description um, what i wasn't particularly impressed with on the uh, on the standard was the bridge um, if we take a look at that you can see uh, there's the bridge on that guitar here's the bridge on this one a different beast altogether the reason i wasn't impressed with the bridge on that previous guitar on the standard was because it wasn't very good at uh, the, the, the tuners are down here obviously and um, it was a difficult guitar to tune the tuners were very stiff and not particularly ergonomic um, so I'll tell you all about what I think of this guitar. Is it any better or worse or just the same as the uh, as the standard? Right after we've heard how it sounds in a mix.
And as usual, you'll find a full tab for that piece of music in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it and a jam track for you to play along with yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address and the link is in the description. Three dollars or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these additional resources and bits and pieces and just general goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive, massive heartfelt thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are linked down below. A little bit of housekeeping. As usual, I was plugged into the Marshall DSL-1 combo for the cleaner and lower gain tones. I was using uh, the classic gain channel with those settings and for the more shouty high gain stuff, it was the ultra gain channel with those settings so there you go that's what you were hearing um so what do i think of this guitar well it has the same wonderful addictive playability as the uh, as the standard model you cannot fault the playability on this guitar it is absolutely gorgeous as i say the uh, the compound neck profile which goes either from a c to a u or vice versa i always get confused with that sort of thing but basically it's it's a neck that is comfortable wherever you are on it the compound radius fretboard which i think goes from nine and a half inches down here up to 14 inches up at the dusty end absolutely beautiful guitar to play on the astonishingly good stainless steel frets with the uh, beautifully finished ends something of a signature for the Ert guitar brand that is all present and correct here absolutely gorgeous the bridge is by far and away the biggest plus for this guitar this guitar costs i think 499 and the standard model is 349 so it's 150 quid dearer um but you're getting you know the different timbers and what have you and you're getting this much better bridge i think why is it better because the tuners work you don't need that frankly silly little crank tool uh to just to turn the tuners which you do on the other one it, it, again as i said in the uh videos i did about that guitar i would put money on the fact that if you've got one of those gw2 guitars you're going to end up losing that little kind of uh, mini kind of starting handle sort of thing that attaches magnetically to the bridge and then you are kind of screwed really uh because you, you can't turn the tuners without i couldn't on mine anyway that's uh, all i'm saying maybe yours is uh, maybe i just got a bad one but this this is by far and away, uh, I think, a much easier design to, to use and to live with. Don't get me wrong, I still think the, um, the, the, the headless thing is a bit of a gimmick. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a distraction. Yes, this guitar balances perfectly, but, you know, I could pick up any one of a number of guitars I've got in here that will react in exactly the same way when i take my hands away it you know um you know I, I remember even having an sg in here not that long ago where suddenly uh i think i maybe i got the only sg in the world that didn't suffer from neck dive but it didn't um so there you go it's i don't think you need to get rid of the headstock in order to make a, a, a balanced guitar it's light but then again if i just pick up this guitar here my prs s2 standard 24 you know doing that sort of which hand wins kind of uh, which hand is heavier kind of comparison between this you, you're hard pressed to find a difference between them uh, talking of weight and weights and measures and stuff like that um the weights and measures for this guitar are exactly the same as the standard model let's have a look at them here they are uh, there's the first and 12th threat neck profiles weight of 2.97 uh, kilos you can see the nut width there and the dc pickup resistance is um 16 i can't really see the screen from here i, make, I need new glasses but 16 and a bit k on the bridge seven and a bit on the neck and in the middle five and a bit so you know uh very well especially on that bridge pickup a very hot sounding pickup which brings me to my next point um when, as I said, you turn the volume down to clean up the sound on the standard model, it just got a little bit muddy and a little bit dark. It's less so on this guitar. Um, is that because of the uh, the different timbers the guitar's made from the different bridge? Whatever. Debate will uh, rage on over that, I'm sure. Uh, but it still did kind of begin to lack a little bit of clarity when you clean the sound up. So um, before I recorded that demo that you heard earlier, I installed a treble bleed circuit on this guitar. And, um, well, here's a little bit of a before and after uh, 
that you'll hear what, what it sounds like before the treble bleed and what it sounds like after. On both of these clips here, I'm once again going into the Marshall on those settings with the guitar's volume rolled down and I'm on the neck pickup. Here we go. <laughs> So that treble bleed, which is literally just a capacitor and a resistor soldered across the lugs on the uh, volume control. I did a video on this about four years ago. Um, so if you can, I can't bear to watch my own videos at the best of time. But if you can bear to watch one of my old videos from 2018, go and check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. It explains what a treble bleed is and, and how it works. And it's, it's literally, it took... 10 minutes to install and cost pennies to get and it's really i think uh, made the guitar much more usable when you back the guitar's volume off some people will say ah yes but that sounds a bit too thin and a bit too um you know kind of it, it, it lacks warmth well you know that's what this controls for on the guitar that's why guitars have a tone control if you want to roll off your top end it's there i just don't like it when the guitar decides to uh, do that for me and I, I don't have any say in the matter um i like the full signal to be there and i can turn the, the treble off if i'll turn some treble off if i want to i don't want to be you know kind of painted into that particular corner and, and you know lose the treble whether i want to or not um, I may still swap the pickups out on this guitar. That uh, bridge humbucker at 16 and a bit K is a little bit too hot for my liking, and I am curious about um, Tone Rider pickups. Um, I put some Alnico 2 Blues uh, pickups into that Faisley um, Telecaster copy that um, I got recently, and it, it, they're beautiful pickups, and I just generally like. Um, Alnico 2, uh, especially for humbuckers. Um, I have Alnico 2 Vansons in my signature guitar. I have um, Alnico 2 uh, Tesla Sharks by Iron Gear in um, that. It's over there in the corner, you can't see. In the uh, Artist TC59 Telecaster. So I am curious about what the, uh, the Tone Rider Alnico 2 humbuckers are like. So that might just be another modification I do to this guitar. But as it stands at the moment with um, the, uh, the treble bleed installed and the, the much more usable and serviceable bridge, I'm a lot happier with this guitar. The, the, the standard model, um, with every time I picked it up, I thought I can forgive this guitar any of its faults. Uh, for this wonderful playability and then I would go and try and tune it or I would try and get you know a clean sound that I was happy with and it would I just knew if I'd hung on to that guitar it would have um, it would have been a constant source of don't I'm not enjoying this you know it would have been one of those um, spoiling the ship for a hip of the tar seems to be um, the, the phrase that springs to mind but with this that's all now sorted and I am very pleased to um to have got this guitar and it is definitely going to be a keeper so there you go folks that is my review of the ert gw2 pro guitar make of it what you will i uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and found it useful and informative and possibly even entertaining in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like while you're at it don't forget as always the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we have a beer and talk about music and guitars fantastic way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now